Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today, I am here to do my book review for Melody by David Hoffer. This is my second favorite out of the six books we read for the self-published science fiction contest. I would call this a science fiction psychological thriller. I'm not sure if that's exactly the category it's in. This deals with first contact, and it's first contact in a very different way. So this is a dual POV, the first of which we follow Stephen, who is a psychologist, specifically working with people who have a mental disorder or mental health issues. He himself has been diagnosed with schizophrenia uh, since he was a child. And as part of his schizophrenia, he hears music. And he hasn't found anybody else who also hears music. And at the start of the book, his four-year-old daughter mentions hearing music. And so he starts worrying that she also has schizophrenia. She's very desperate to remind him of this music and to play it for him. And it's the same music that he's hearing or that he hears. Obviously, he's going to relate to the name of the book. The second point of view is Dolores, who is a scientist with NASA. And at the beginning of the book, she's working for NASA at a time where there's going to be a new administrator and a new focus for NASA's missions. This is something that happens within NASA a lot. A new administrator comes in, or a new presidential government comes in, and NASA's focus gets shifted to different things. So, and that's happening. She's basically been told that her job is going to disappear. So she's not very thrilled about that, especially since the satellite her and her program have been working on for a while has finally gone up and is testing and they're seeing, trying to see if it works. And then there seems to be a malfunction. Well, it ends up, it's not actually malfunctioning. It's picking up these gravitational waves, which have a certain rhythm, almost like music. So that's the setup. I do need to say with this book, there are some trigger warnings. One is death of a child. Another one would be wrongful imprisonment and abuse. This isn't necessarily a pro or a con, but I thought it was interesting that this book keeps a very narrow focus on characters. Usually with something of this scope, I'm used to seeing it way larger and with more character point of views. This doesn't, it keeps mainly to the same people. I mean, you have the two main POVs, but the other side characters are all pretty much the same throughout this book, which keeps this story tighter and it keeps it on a more personal level, I feel while at the same time it narrows the scope of the view and you don't get a you don't get a variety of POVs. Well I mean you only see two POVs. You don't get a variety of commentary from the people involved. So like I said, not necessarily a pro or a con, but definitely a choice that the author made. A pro this story feels very suspenseful. It does keep you on the edge of your seat wondering what is gonna happen next and how is that then going to influence what the characters do or the choices the characters make? A pro for this is I also love the family dynamics. Even in the face of tragedy, um, like I said at the beginning, there is a death of a child. You get to see a couple who they're struggling with their grief, but they still want to work together. I think many times in books you see where the couple splits up in an event like a death of a child, but in this case, I'm not going to say necessarily that they become stronger because they also have some gaps where they're not together, but the family connection is stronger. Their brother relationship stays strong no matter what. So the family dynamic really is the center of Stephen's story. A con for this is the portrayal of the military and how they go after Stephen. <laughs> they ask him to come answer some questions and he does voluntarily and then after that they 
get a warrant and raid his home and then take his like phone and that action wasn't warranted in my head even if you knew that he lied to go to that extreme that fast instead of trying to work with him that was a big leap for me to take as a reader and it, this book does use like the military in the we're paranoid it's about security nobody we don't want people to know about a first contact that is happening and we want to use whatever technology we can get for our military purposes of dominating the world for me that's a huge con it really made the military structure the enemy and all of this which i think was kind of the point but at the same time i think it's Disingen disingenuous to the military that we have now because that is not actually their focus. I mean, also, soldiers are taught to think for themselves and in this you have a lot of the command is telling the soldiers what to do and the soldiers just blindly obey. It is definitely a trope or an archetype within science fiction, but it's one that I have found over the years to be distasteful. A huge pro for this one is I love the first contact story and how everything relates. I can't tell you because that's a huge spoiler, but I really like how Hoffer did the first contact and why the this other alien race is reaching out, what the purpose is for it, and how they're doing it. I thought was fascinating. So one of my favorites as well. If you haven't had a chance, go ahead and go read it. Thank you and have a great day.